What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Reggie Bryant. This channel is all about personal finance and personal growth and I am the author of The Wealth Journey. If you haven't picked up this book, stop playing, go to Amazon and get it. It's called The Wealth Journey by yours truly. I'm here to help you build wealth. In this video, I just want to address a topic that's very popular on this channel. It's all about moving out and when you should move out. I get a lot of questions about this topic, and rightfully so, because this is one of the most important financial decisions you can possibly make, especially early on. So, Big Bro Reggie is going to help you out. Even if you're older than me, I'm Big Bro. We're about to get into this video topic right now. I'm going to start this video off by saying that I highly, highly, highly recommend anybody who can to move out of their parents' house, get the independence about themselves, build some confidence, responsibility about yourself, and really understand what this real world is all about because that is the only way you're gonna fully understand and immerse yourself within it. On the other hand, I want you to be smart about it and move out of your parents' house at the right time. I've made videos on what kind of the prerequisites are of doing that stuff. I'm going to get into that a little bit in this video and kind of why it's important. So a good way to illustrate that is I'm going to show you a video real quick that I just so happened to see the other day. And I was like, wow, this would be great to cover in a video topic. So we're going to check this video out right now and then we'll get back to my commentary, my opinion, and also what my overall advice is for anyone who's thinking about moving out their parents house and what they need to do to prepare for that so we're going to get into this video and you can't afford it go back home and live with mama it's okay <laughs> i graduated my master's and i stayed with my me and my dad uh we had started getting back on good terms you know i stayed with him for a year and a half before i moved out how old was you 25 see 25 out my master's i ain't i was like i ain't moving to the city because i can't afford it i i ain't have much saved up self-awareness yep I was like, shit, I'm going to make that sacrifice, stay with him for two years, and then I was up, and I got my own spot for a year, and then I bought a house after that. What stops a lot of people from doing that? What my homie's going to say? What's the, pride what ego. the chick's going to say? Listen, if your ego bigger than your bank account, you need to reevaluate, and we just going to keep it a buck. That, that's just what it is. If you got so, too much ego to say, hey, I can't go back home to get my shit together because I want to live this type of life or I want to look a certain way, who are you really trying to look good for? We just gonna keep it but most women on social media. That's that's what they're trying to do. They want to look good for so and so to impress her. When it's like, bro, all you gotta do is be yourself. How much money did you say that year staying with your pops? Uh man, I was making seventy five. See, so all I had to do was help him with a couple bills, pay pay insurance and car. No other than that, so I probably was saving. I probably was saving a good three to four, maybe five. Every month. I ain't spend too much. Okay. Every month. Yeah, so. That puts you in a good situation. Say but we don't think five. that. We, we turn 18 and say, hey, I got to get my own. I got to get out here and get it. Why? Why are you doing that to yourself? Unpack that video. Let's talk about it real quick. First of all, that was an outstanding take on the whole premise of moving out, wanting to move out, but not being able to afford it. He said he was 25 years old. That's what I'd be trying to tell y'all in these videos. I moved out at 18. I was able to do it, but I didn't like move out and... It was just me working and I was supporting myself fully like, nah, I moved out, but I was in college. And then as I was in college, I did things to prepare myself to make sure I would get a high paying job to make sure I had a decent amount of money. I didn't do the best I could in having the most saved up when I moved out, I will admit, but I did calculate the numbers accurately when I did actually move out and I was able to support myself. I was able to build a savings. I was able to do those types of things. I was 21 when I, when I guess you could really say that I was officially on my own and everybody has different paces in life. Everybody has a different age they're going to be once they hit the pinnacle of their career. They're going to be at a certain age when they decide to move out, when they decide to get married, when they decide to have kids. A lot of things in life cannot be compared to when other people do them. Moving out is one of those things. A lot of folks are 18 right now, 17, 16 years old, and they feel caged in being at home with their parents. Maybe their parents are toxic. A lot of y'all say y'all's parents are toxic. I think overall, we just have issues that we need to face and deal with on our own. But outside of that, you have decisions to make and you have a lot of logical thoughts you need to have that take place before you're able to make a decision and end up in a good position. And so, yeah, this guy was 25. He had just gotten his master's in college and moved back in with one of his parents. And there's nothing wrong with that. And if someone has something to say about it, a lot of times the people who have something to say about that are not going to be more successful than you. I've never had a person more successful than me talk down to me, ever. 
I've never had a person more successful than me call me broke or none of that judging me, none of that stuff. It's always going to be the people less successful than you. So someone else your age might be living on their own and looking like they're doing good, but you don't know what their bank account looks like. That's why I always say on this channel, wealth is what you don't see. Peace of mind is also something that you don't see. You may think you see it, but people can act. You know what I'm saying? People can fake it real good, make it seem like they're doing good, make it seem like they ain't worried about anything, but you don't know what their final thoughts are before they go to bed at night. So I think it was incredibly intelligent that he had that self-awareness, just like they said in that video, to know that he didn't have the funds to then live on his own and pay for his bills and still be able to create savings, still be able to invest, still be able to do all the things I tell you that are fundamentally things that we should be doing anyway. You work hard for your money, so it literally makes zero sense that you would work so hard just to break even and essentially live your life and be zeroed out every single month at the end of the month waiting for your next paycheck. Like it just, to me, that doesn't make any sense. It makes sense to be able to do all of that and then some. It makes sense that you would be able to be able to save and pay for all your expenses and have money left over to buy things that you want, uh, buy extra things, go on vacations, invest, build money on the side. If you want to go into business, build a side business. That makes the most sense to me. And if it takes moving back in with your parents to do that, there is no shame in that game. It's much better than going out on your own and trying to sustain that only to realize the hard way you need to move back into your parents' house. It's going to come with a lot more shame. It's going to come with a lot of I told you so's. It's going to come with a lot less confidence because your confidence is going to do this. It is going to drain because you thought you could do something that you didn't logically think through and people were probably in your life telling you you shouldn't do this. And then even if they don't say I told you so, you just know it's on their mind because when you have to swallow your pride, move out of your own place and go back in with them, now you're in a position where it's like, man, they're probably thinking like, I told you so, you shouldn't have done this. And you might start thinking and viewing yourself as a failure. And that is not going to give you more oomph. That's not going to give you more passion. So this guy in this video, he was spot on. He was very sharp in saying this. He's like, I was making like 75. Okay, how many people do you know that make 75 or even six figures that are able to save four or $5,000 a month? I'll wait. Because you're not going to be able to save that kind of money unless you move in. And that was that gave him the ability to be able to save quicker without necessarily having to increase his income. He was making a good income already, but he didn't have a crazy amount of bills. And so he was able to just stack up his money and then move out when he got ready. And he was able to get a house and he was able to make an investment and build that equity for himself. So I would honestly recommend most People from college are not going to be making 75, even with the master's. I know he had a master's, but a lot of people who get their master's are not going to be making 75 because another thing that determines your salary is your experience. It's not just your education. So he had a very good start, 25 years old, making 75. That was a good start. But he got himself ahead of the game by minimizing the amount of money he would actually have to spend. And in doing that, he built a platform essentially for himself to save as much as possible and do whatever he needed to do with his money. Now, I will say if you do decide to do this, just because you're saving four or $5,000 a month, you can still mess it up real quick. Don't go out here buying, no, you know what I'm saying, crazy expensive car, because then when you do have to move out, you have a crazy expensive car note that's like rent money, like fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500, it's gonna be harder to save once you do move out. So be smart with it. Be like this gentleman in this video who was really being logical about the situation. He wasn't worried about what other people were thinking. He, he said your ego can't be bigger than your bank account, and that is facts. It can't. You know, I heard somebody say you can't be broke and proud at the same time. So what's it going to be? You have to put yourself in a position where you have the strong enough mindset to say, you know what? I'm going to improve my life, and I'm going to get the results that I know I deserve, that I know that my family deserves, but I just know I got to put the work in to get there. Right now, I haven't put the work in yet, so I haven't gotten to where I need to be. And sometimes that work is making that decision to say, you know what, I'm going to move back in with my parents for a little while. It might be a little unbearable. My friends might pick on me a little bit, but you got to think, you know, who is your real friends? That's what you got to think about. 
people might be like, oh, he's living with his parents. You might think about the dating world and be like, oh, this person's still living with their parents. What's this person going to think? I don't care what you think. I tell you all the time. You have to lose that comparison. You got to lose that idea that what other people think matter. Because what are they doing for you? Are they paying your bills? Are they signing your paychecks? Are they offering you any kind of support, whether it's moral support, advice? Are they helping you get any positive results in your life other than having fun and cool and being cool people to hang around? So you got to think about that when you think about, well, what is this person going to think? Why do you care? I don't think any successful person that you've ever seen, whether it's presidents, actors, artists, you know, some of these types of people that I just listed have some polarizing traits, which means they can be off-putting to a certain type of people. You think all of them sit around caring what people think? No, they have to keep doing them because what they realize early on is it's either follow my passion and be talked about or do nothing and be talked about. No matter what you do in life, people are going to have something to say. I heard David Goggins say one time, he's like, yeah, man, like, I used to be extremely overweight, wasn't doing nothing. I was just sitting on the couch eating cinnamon buns and watching TV, not doing nothing, feeling sorry for myself. And people were like, hey, man, let me give you some advice. Let me, you should be doing this. You should be getting more active and stuff. And he was like, you know what? When I started getting active, when I started losing weight, when I started building muscle, when I started getting into my best shape of my life, you know what people started doing? They started criticizing me, saying that I do it too much, that I'm being too healthy, you know? So people are going to have something to say no matter what. So even if... You've got your own place. People are going to have something to say. People are going to say, well, you should be spending more money on more things that are going to put you in a hole versus if you move back in with your parents and you put yourself in a fantastic financial position that almost no one gets to because they don't make the smart decision early on. Then they're going to be saying, oh, you're a loser. You're still living with your parents. They don't know. They don't know what's going on because if you're making 75 grand a year, you ain't no loser. I don't care if you're living with your parents or you're living with your friends or if you're living by yourself. That ain't that ain't loser money right there. Sure, there's going to be plenty of people who make more, but for all the people that make more, there's way more people in this world that make less. There have been people who have been working their entire careers aiming for that type of salary that haven't even gotten there yet. Been working 20 years, climbing up the ladder. And that's another thing that I'm not going to get too much into in this video, but that's outside of putting yourself in great positions to save and do everything you need to do with your money early on, also focusing on increasing your income that early on, you're going to put yourself in an amazing, amazing position. So don't worry about what people say. Um, I do think that when you do move out of your parents' house, I think it should be done as early as possible. So I would just say, get yourself in that position as early as possible. Build yourself up that five-figure emergency fund at three to six months worth of pay after tax pay, I might add, because most of us out earn what our expenses are, have that extra $2,000 in your other savings account. So in this order, I would say, save up your first $2,000. After you do that, put most of your money towards your emergency fund for that three to six month buffer, just in case something crazy happens and have a good amount of money in buffering your checking account, but you don't want to put too much. You probably don't want it to go over like, say, a thousand left at the end of a month because if it goes over that you'll start kind of spending money that could honestly be saved or put somewhere else but that's ultimately going to be up to you but once you get yourself in that position you can move out and have a substantial savings compared to people who have been working for 10 20 30 years just to be perfectly honest with you and that is the type of leverage that you have when you were younger that's the type of leverage you have when you're first starting out you have the ability to make those sacrifices and decisions, but it becomes harder to make those decisions once you're married and once you have kids and once you've put, made a bunch of bad financial decisions that puts you in a catastrophic debt situation. And then you have to make decisions that just seem that much more demeaning. If you think a younger person who's like 21 years old or 25 years old is going to think about, what are my friends going to think? What do you think the 45, 50 year old person is going to think when they have to move back in with their parents or if they have to make major life-changing adjustments just to meet their goal that looks the meaning you can't manage your finances based off of what everyone else thinks you should do what should what what meaning does what they have to say have in your life because how many people are even financially savvy or know what to do with money that you know of personally if they don't have the type of results that you want in your life why are you listening to them anyway 
I do think moving out is one of the most powerful things you can do. So once you do, you will build that confidence. You will build that strength. Your parents, your whole family will build that level of respect for you. Cause like my man did it. That's what I'm talking about. Or, you know, daughter, son, whatever, whoever the person was, right? He really did it. She really did it. Taking care of themselves, booking their own doctor's appointments, paying their own bills, got their own insurance, got a 401k, got a job with benefits. That's all what most families want. And then if you mess around and do more than that, like the advice that I give you in my videos about investing in yourself and investing in your own individual accounts and building a Roth IRA in addition to your 401k, that's just going to make the money come in faster and multiply faster. So anyway, I know I got passionate in this video, but that's how I feel about moving out. It's important to do so early in my opinion, but if it takes you a little while, it takes you a little while. It's no shame in it. Like being financially stable and financially independent and not having to worry about other people supporting you uh, with money, having that is far more important than worrying about what someone else thinks and feeling embarrassment for a few years. Who gives a crap? Who's gonna remember those two years when the rest of your life is financially abundant? You know what I mean? That's just kind of how I think about it. And if people wanna shame you for stuff like that, are they really, are they really your friends? Because if any of my friends told me they were moving back in with their parents to get themselves in a good financial position, I'm not gonna judge them. I'm gonna be like, you know what? That's probably the best thing for you and I support you along the way. If you need anything, just let me know. That's the kind of friend I am. So just surround yourself around the right people. But anyway, I'm not going to spend too, too much time on this video. That is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. So you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.